Should you answer, doctor? It's a classical example of aviator's fracture. So, what is aviator? Fracture of the neck of the talus. Talus is the main uh, podium on which we are standing. So, fracture of this talus is the classically called aviator's fracture is what you have to basically remember. Then similarly, comminuted intraarticular fracture of the distal end of the tibia is called pilon fracture and uh, a ankle fracture in which there is a fracture of the neck of the fibula, tibia fibula are the two bones, na? along with the fracture of the neck of the fibula, you basically call it as mesonase fracture is what you have to remember. Now you have been given a radiograph, Preeti, Gayatri, Amrita and everybody, I hope online students they have a clarity of all images in the question paper. <coughs> What is this? This is also called boxer's fracture. So, what is boxer's fracture? Basically, a vertically displaced fracture of the neck of the fifth metacarpal. Let us see. These are carpal bones. She looks too pretty, try to catch her. Right? Then, what you have? You are having uh, the metacarpal bones. After that, you have phalanges. Proximal phalanx, middle phalanx, distal phalanx. Between the carpal bones here and the phalanges there, what is this called as? Metacarpal. And fifth metacarpal, always thumb is counted as one. One, two, three, four, five. Little finger become five. So, fifth metacarpal, whenever the boxer is kicking, then there is a fracture which can happen in the fifth metacarpal is called boxer's fracture. Now, this is another very interesting question. Where is the fracture located in this case? It is classically called the Bennett's fracture. A oblique intraarticular fracture in the base of the first metacarpal and subluxation of the <coughs> trapezio-metacarpal joint is basically called as the Bennett's fracture is uh, first metacarpal with a subluxation of the trapezio metacarpal joint is basically called the uh, Bennett's fracture is what need to be remembered. <coughs> now, what is the fracture which you are seeing in this radiograph? At least uh, See, these questions are very simple to answer. At least if you know eponymous names of the fractures and which bones do they involve, upper limb bones or lower limb bones. Itna gyan hai to kafi hai aap moksh paane ke liye PG medical entrance mein. So, Smith's fracture. See, Smith is opposite to Collis. There is a fracture in the radius at the cortico cancellous junction of the radius and uh, there is a ventral displacement. If the dorsal displacement is there you call collis. Ventral displacement is called as the Smith's fracture. Now you have been shown a fracture in this radiograph. <coughs> what is this fracture? Typically, where is it occurring? There is a fracture uh, <coughs> at the base of the fifth uh, fifth metatarsal. That is the reason what fracture it should be. It should be Jones. Actually, wrong uh, key was given to you. In the key, we by mistake has given it as A. It is B. Jones fracture, where there is a fracture of the fifth base of the fifth metatarsal is what you have to basically remember. Then doctor, what is this fracture? What do you see in this fracture? Typically there is a fracture which is involving 
the vertebra and uh, which part of the vertebra this is also called seat belt fracture otherwise called chance fracture it will run horizontally along the body of the vertebra through and through it and through the posterior elements of the vertebra this is called chance fracture is what you have to chance fracture posterior element means spine to so then and through and through the body of the vertebra chance fracture is what i want to underscore to all of you now you have been shown a fracture where is it involving what is it involving basically it is involving the spinous process of the lower cervical vertebra these are the cervical vertebral bodies these are the spines of them seventh cervical vertebral body spine has been evolved such an evolution fracture is called claeschwalles fracture is what you have to basically remember then what is this fracture very special in the pelvis which you are seeing what is it involving in the pelvis fundamentally there is a pelvis fracture where there is a combination of the fracture of the pubic rami and along with that the sacroiliac joint and also the uh, sacroiliac joint is also affected and uh, the ischium so such a combination of multiple fractures in the pelvis defines it as a, a malgain's fracture is what you need to remember then you are seeing a typical deformity in the finger typical deformity in the finger very tricky question bordeni deformity swanneck deformity mallet finger all fingers look similar but uh, so all our classmates fingers are similar we will push the ring only to one person so who is that one finger whom you want to push the thing uh, the ring is very important that is mallet finger so what is mallet finger at the distal interphalangeal joint the finger get flexed dip flexion is seen and there is a rupture of extensor tendon if the extensor tendon is not there there is unopposed action of flexion so that's the reason there is a uh, what happens there is a uh, flexion of the distal interphalangeal joint as what you can see here as what you can see here is called mallet finger is what need to be remembered what is boutonni deformity pip flexion with dip extension not flexion then what is meant by swan neck deformity dip flexion with pip extension it remain in extended position proximal interphalangeal joint in swan neck whereas mallet is only isolated flexion of the dip pip is not into extension then it is mallet finger that is a point you need to basically appreciate so radiographically looking at uh of course it is difficult to say whether it is uh, because here uh, uh okay only mip is shown not uh, pip is shown huh? all right huh? i mean pip is there but uh, you can see the evolution which is the important clue to say that it is uh, mallet finger is what you need to appreciate no doctor you have been shown a radiograph what is this there are two types of fractures one is montegia other is called galiazzi what is galiazzi fracture of distal third of the radius with the dislocation of the distal radio ulnar joint everything is distal distal hota hai niche niche hota hai galis galis hota hai galiazzi 
Okay, so Galiasi is distal, Montage here, mountain is on the top, so proximal is what you need to remember. Okay, so this is the anterior dislocation of the radial head along with the fracture of the proximal one third of the ulna. Then what do you call it as? If it is distal, you call Galiasi, proximal, you call it as Montesia is the fracture. Now, you have been shown an orthopedic device. If you go through the recent DNB exam, All India exam, image based questions in that, state MD entrance of AP Telangana is only last year only introduced, scintillating 35 images in the question. Actually, if it is image based exam, it is very easy, easy paper. Because if you know the clue, you can answer it straight. There is no humbug about it. And examiners will give generally very characteristic images, Bailey and Love, common textbooks, whatever that we have, those images only will be given. Okay. So, instruments, especially surgery, dynops and uh, orthopedics. Instruments you have to go through. Clinical medicine, clinical surgery, DAS. Last May you will have instruments. Similarly, Datta will have, Shaw will have a, a small chapter on instruments. You need to have one glimpse of it. Cleveland forceps, how does it look, etc, etc. Okay. So, what you have an orthopedic device which is in place. And what is this device basically? It is basically a Smith Peterson's nail is what you need to remember. For the fracture neck of femur, we use this fixation device, Smith Peterson. Then uh, fracture shaft of femur, we use constraint nail. Then um, fracture forearm of the bones, forearm bones, we use Talvarkar's nail. And fracture tibia, we use the V nail is what you need to remember. Then you have been shown an orthopedic device <coughs> which is passing through and through the bone and uh, when it is not drilled into bone, outside typical appearance, what is this basically called? They are called ender snails. What are ender snails? Intertrochantric fracture, we use ender snail. Rush nail is a general purpose nail that we drill. See, there are totally 62 topics in orthopedics. Major topics are all bone tumors, fracture neck of femur, shoulder dislocation, congenital telepus equinovarus, congenital dislocation of the hip, like that. Totally, there is a 35 hours of discussion which we have done reviewing common points asked about each of these topics and uh, you have a online video library of orthopedics in anatomy to medicine.com website. So, you can always have a review, selective review wherever the topics regularly you are going wrong and you do not want to read. You can always listen uh, 30-40 minutes you can do the revision, but you do something or other, but be sure. See, orthopedics, surgery, gynops, all surgical branches, 90% scoring you have to get. Any number of years questions will be same. Static, questions are static, they are not dynamic like in pharmacology, general medicine. Gynops, orthopedics, surgery, surgical divisions. Okay. So, if you if you scored in the today's paper 200, less than 100, less than 100, we will give you one week complimentary access to the online video library. I am really telling you, I am not joking. Our anatomy to medicine.com video library, complimentary access we will give you one week, but you do revision and uh, see how you are answering. 10 questions in full scale grand test on Sunday and tell me that there is a earth and sky difference after reviewing the 35 hours of the video on orthopedics. I am the happiest man. Eh? 
So those who scored less than 100, please ask our helpline. They will give you a complimentary access for one week to anatomytomedicine.com. But only one week. Huh? Then uh, orthopedic device. You can even access the video on your uh, mobile phone also. Uh, very easy. Huh? So if you are on a duty also in the hospital, if you are having Wi-Fi, you can access. Huh? Now, what is the orthopedic device which is being shown? There is a topic we discussed called nuts, screws, bolts and uh, nails in orthopedics. Orthopedic devices, half an hour discussion is there in the online video library. Huh? Now, what is this orthopedic device? It is buttressing the bone. You can see, it is simply buttressing. Like banyan tree has buttress roots. Botany we studied, no. Right? One of my uh, very good friend, Dr. Uh, one of my very good friend, childhood friend, Shabir, his uh, daughter is in 12th class. I am studying with her a uh, uh, little bit of botany, geology once more, Solanaceae, Liliaceae, Brassicaceae and all that. Uh, next year she will enter into Usmania Medical College. Uh, so, doctor, you uh, buttress. So, these are buttressing. Buttressing plates is what you need to basically remember. So, where do you use that? Whenever there is a condylar fracture of tibia, buttress plate. Similarly, periarticular fractures, you use locking compression plate, etc. etc. Now, doctor, what is this orthopedic device? Uh, which is, uh, and where is it basically used in treatment of what? Fundamentally, it is a Smith Peterson, uh, it is a dynamic hip screw actually, uh, which is used in the management of intertrochantric, intertrochantric fractures. We use a dynamic hip screw, is what we need to basically remember. So, if you drive the dynamic hip screw in real time, <coughs> it typically looks like this a radiograph, dynamic hip screw. Then you have a orthopedic device which is used for fixing the small bone fractures like this and what do you like to call that as? K wire, beautiful. So cobra plate is used in hip arthrodesis, steel wire is for fracture of patella, K wire is the fracture of small bones and spoon plate is for the fracture of the lower end of the tibia is what you need to remember. Now, doctor, everybody has a prognostication system. Gynecologists have for endometrial carcinoma. So, orthopedicians also said, we too want a prognostication system to prognosticate the patients who are having open fractures. As a casualty house surgeon, you might have come across hundreds of fractures in your 30 days of clinical posting in casualty. So, Gustilo Anderson have proposed a classification which is very popular. So, in that grade 1 means any punctured wound of less than or equal to 1 centimeter with minimal soft tissue injury is called grade 1. So, this basically qualifies to be a grade 1 injury. Huh? Why not? Because soft tissue injury is not very, huh? uh, it is more than 1 centimeter you want to say, uh, it is more puncture, I mean in the sense that uh, puncture wound of less than or equal to 1 centimeter, I mean the gap between the wound edges, 1 centimeter, not the size of the length of the wound. How can the wound can be smaller than 1 centimeter? I will show you grade 2, then uh, that clears your doubt. This is called grade 2. Soft tissue injury is significant. And uh, what else is there? Wound is greater than 1, oh, 1 centimeter length only. Eh? Okay. Moderate soft tissue injury. Comminution is minimal accordingly. Oh, 
1 centimeter in length. So, this should be more than 1 centimeter in length you mean to say. I will just check that. Uh, no doctor, this is all blood coming out. Actual point of wound is uh, uh, only one uh, puncture is there. Oh, I am saved. <laughs> Good. Your doubt is very genuine. Huh? You are genuine, but my answer is also genuine. Let me tell you. Huh? So, <coughs> there was a puncture and that bleed clot is coming out, doctor. You have to clean it then to discover. Now, what is this orthopedic device that you are basically seeing? <coughs> Fundamentally, there are two kinds of splints. One is Thoma splint. Other is called as bowler bronze splint. Basically, uh, the main difference is the thorn splint has got a ring into which the leg is pushed, is uh, put into. Without ring, only if the frame is offered with pulleys, then that is called as bowler bronze splint. So, if you look at the bowler bronze splint, you have one proximal pulley that prevents foot drop. You have a second pulley traction in line with the femur. Then you have a third pulley traction in line for traction in line with the leg. So, three pulley structure without any ring is basically the way to recognize a bowler bront splint is what you need to basically understand. Now, what is this radiograph? basically showing. Whenever petalar fracture is there, is it a one piece fracture, two piece fracture, transverse two piece fracture or a comminuted fracture? Once more if it is a two piece fracture, then is it a displaced two piece or undisplaced two piece? That is how you approach the management of uh, when do you want to do petalectomy, when do you want to do tension band wiring, all those funda you have to master. Huh? So, what is this basically called tension band wire is the name which is being given. <coughs> then doctor, what is this technique? There is only one word with a technique in entire orthopedics Maheshwari. What is that? Illivero technique. Right? Illivero technique. Ah. <coughs> uh, so, what are all the what are all the scenarios where you will use uh, illusory technique for? One is limb lengthening, second is osteomyelitis, and you will also use it for non-union and for correction of deformities, not for avascular necrosis. The other are all the indications of illusory technique: limb lengthening, non-union, deformity correction, osteomyelitis and arthrodesis management, you will basically use it. Now, you have a radiological view here. What is this view called as? Skyline. Basically called skyline view. Petal low femoral joint, you can see through merchant view. It's a tabular fracture, you can do with Judet's view. And scaphoid is with oblique view. Scaphoid is more important, commonly asked in exam. So, even calcaneum also you can do skyline view. Whenever you do calcaneal skyline view, you will get like a foot of the horse, equine foot. You will put it and take an x-ray. You have a calcaneus, talus, third tarsal, fourth tarsal, first and second tarsal bones and central tarsal. All of these are basically exposed to identify the presence of a calcaneal injury called once more skyline view. Okay? This is a typical skyline view to recognize the presence of a calcaneal fracture. You can very much use it. Then in this skyline view, what are you seeing in the petella? You can see the fracture of the petella on the lateral aspect of the petella is what need to be remembered. Now, 
the evolution of the anteriliac spine in the pelvic x-ray is uh, uh, associated with what? Rupture of rectus femoris. From its origin, it become uh, separated is what you need to remember. Whenever there is any flexor injury in the hand, what, which zone is called no man's zone? I thought of giving this as an image based question but could not get time. So, it is called as zone 2. Do not forget which, which area is called zone 2. This is zone 1 doctor. Huh? Then this is zone 2, this is zone 3, this is zone 4, zone 5. Okay. So, if you read too much, no? Wedding may mehendi laga itobi. Please don't put it on zone 2, zone 3, you will be saying. So, be sure, life is not all academics, life is more joyful part is there. Um, I think most of you got your uh, high yield topic list. Three, 1100 topics, 300 hours is what you need to prepare. If you didn't get, collect it from our uh, guys, they will give you the high yield topic list. Read less, but read thoroughly. Go with that attacking spirit to exam. If you limit yourself to 1100 topics, you can finish your preparation in 300 hours. Now, doctor, uh, Brody's abscess. Any abscess or osteomyelitis or anything, what is the entry point? Metaphysis, not the shaft. So, metaphysis, it is not commonly involving the diaphysis, but metaphysis. And uh, this is how Brody's abscess can uh, typically appear like. What does cancellous graft basically provide? There are two types of bone grafts. One is called cortical bone graft and is cancellous. Cancellous is for the osteogenesis to improve the healing of the bone. Whereas uh, cortical bone grafts are mainly used for the structural support of the bone is what I want to underscore to all of you. What is modified Jones transfer? Prunita teres is being transferred against extensor carpi radialis brevis is called modified Jones uh, transfer. Then similarly flexor carpi ulnaris against EDC and uh, flexor carpi radialis against EIP. So that is they are the typical tendon transfers. Where do you get thardial knot palsy? Whenever there is a cubitus valgus deformity or a period of time, there is a selective overgrowing on the medial aspect of the bone with undergrowth along the lateral aspect, radial aspect of the forearm bone, and that lead to the friction on the uh, friction on the alar now leading to the thardy ulnar palsy, which typically happens whenever there is a cubitus valgus developing when there is a fracture of the lateral condyle of the humerus, it does not grow. The medial condyle continue to grow and that lead to development of the cubitus valgus with thardy ulnar palsy. Whenever you do arthrodesis, you will choose the most functional position of the joint. Arthrodesis is what? Binding of two bones to make it a fixed joint. Fixed means permanent fixation. So, you will choose the most uh, functional position. So, what is the functional position? Every joint has its own functional position. 5 to 10 degrees flexed position is the functional position of the knee is what you need to remember. So, you will put in slight valgus and uh, uh, with uh, around 0 to 20 degrees of flexion is the typical position. How do you correct genu valgum? So, this is a very interesting question. Maybe this session is too short. Uh, uh, you take at least 15-20 minutes to understand genu varum, genu valgum causes of both of them and uh, fundamentally where is the problem? Medial or lateral aspect? 
and how do you treat it? 20 minutes video in anatomy to medicine.com orthopedics video library. You can review that. For now, supracondylar osteotomy of the FEMA is what you will basically do. And uh, which epicondyle abnormality lead to development of uh, the genu valgum? If the medial epicondyle is immature, it does not grow. Only lateral will grow. And uh, that lead to the development of genu valgum. And that is basically treated by doing a supracondylar wedge distal, um, closed wedge distal femoral osteotomy and excising that excess portion of the overgrowth of the lateral aspect, which will enable medial and lateral become equal. And then once more the leg comes to a straight position instead of bowing. So that is what is uh, basically done is what I want to underscore. Then Jefferson's fracture is fundamentally fracture of the C1. How will you remember? Jefferson is a president of America. America is number one country. So C1, some uh, stupid way to remember. So all eponymous names, doctor, examiner forcing us to remember itself is a stupidity. So, for stupid tasks, we need to also become stupid to counter. With that uh, strong, resilient willpower, you have to mug these things sometimes. And you can't cry about it saying that because you are not the only one crying. Right now, there are at least some 500 students in Hyderabad who will be crying. Who will remember this first or second, Jefferson or uh, Ruderson or uh, uh, Davidson, who will remember? So many sons of the soil are there. Eh? So, but still, minimum things which examiner expects. Smith is Olar, and uh, uh, this is towards dorsal, Coley. You have to remember, there is no way. So, aviator is the fracture of the neck of talus. Baby car fracture is the fracture of the distal end of the humerus with the proximal radius and all, all of them is called baby car fracture. Then Barton is intraarticular fracture of the distal articular surface of the radius with the dislocation of the radiocarpal joint. Bennett is once more intraarticular fracture of the base of the first metacarpal with the subluxation of the trapezio metacarpal uh, joint. Then Rolando is extra articular, whereas Bennett is intra articular. How will you do? Remember, Rolando is road, road is outside the home, no? So it is extra articular. Some stupid way, huh? right? Then uh, boxer, vertically displaced fracture through the already we have seen fifth metacarpal. I am just running through a few common images. Bumper is commutated depressed fracture of the lateral tibial condyle. Then buttonhole fracture is the loss of the bone in a gunshot wound. Then chauffeur is the fracture of the radial styloid. Chauffeur is radial styloid. Chan already we have seen fracture through and through the vertebral body. Clay shoveler fracture of the spinous process of the C7 or T1 vertebra. Then Coli is corticocancellous of distal radio ulnar. Then Smith is reverse of Coli's. Then calf fracture is the fracture of the um, fifth or seventh rib because of coughing. Excessive coughing can lead to cough fracture, rib of fifth or sixth. Then what is cotton? Trimalleolar fracture, tibia, middle malleolus, tibula. Uh, trimalleolar fracture. Galeazi already we have seen, Montagia we have seen. Then what is night stick fracture? Isolated fracture of the shaft of the ulna is called as night stick fracture. What is Gosselin's fracture? It is a V shaped fracture. V shaped fracture. You can see here more clearly. Uh, at the distal end of the tibia. 
then what is it by green stick green stick means there is uh, there are two edges for the bone only one edge is injured the other is not especially in children when the fracture occurs it occurs only in, with the loss of continuity of one uh, side not the other called green stick then jefferson is c1 burst fracture of the atlas you should also know atlas is c1 axis is c2 right that's also important exam hall may will get doubt axis will c2 or atlas is c2 so there we should not then what is jones fifth metacarpal then hangman is traumatic spondylolisthesis slipping of one over the other of c2 c2 is atlas or axis axis huh axis no ah then what is march fracture fracture of the shaft of the second or third metatarsal in cavalry man is a stress fracture called march fracture what is pond fracture in forensic medicine depressed fracture of the calvarium of a infant as what you can see depressed fracture it is what type of fracture is a favorite question this is a depressed fracture then what is pond bimalleolar fracture of the ankle where both tibia and fibula tibia and fibula both of them are injured that is the fracturology which you need to be quite sure <clears throat> now doctor about gout can you give allopurinol in acute attack of gout why gout allopurinol what is the mechanism xanthin oxidase inhibitor the very important principle what precipitates gout any sudden increase or a sudden fall of the uric acid both of them anything can precipitate that's the reason we don't precipitate a sudden change in the uric acid levels allopurinol is not given in acute stage of the gout in acute stage what is the only thing that you will do nsaids non steroidal anti inflammatory drug ibuprofen etc is what you will give and acute gout may patient will be crying dancing jumping and coming to you do something doctor you open his mouth and put one ibuprofen 10 minutes dramatic relief will be there if it is tamil nadu he will also construct a temple for you really i am telling you huh? so uh, some treatments are very dramatic hypokalemic periodic paralysis patient comes with all four limbs paralyzed you give 40 ml equivalents of 40 equivalents of potassium into the dextrose and run it within by the time dextrose bottle is even half running patient will move his limbs and full running he will get up and run away without paying you the fee so dramatic relief they'll build a temple for you <clears throat> now doctor milwaukee brace basically where do we use scoliosis what is famous about scoliosis in the recent time in the newspaper ias top ranker she is a irs officer with scoliosis treatment happening in hyderabad she topped when a scoliosis person can top ias exam is it difficult to top pg medical entrance pg medical entrance is more easier than ias don't you think so or the rivers no doctor it's more easier there uh, anything can come in exam hall how much is silicon level in uh, pacific ocean can be a question there but in uh, pg medical entrance at most they will ask what is chlorination level sir how much is the contact period time this is a predictable romance doctor that is an unpredictable romance ias exam is there. so be happy so on a on a easier vein <clears throat> 